All right, here we are. The uh, booster boxes couldn't stay at home, so we had to find them a new home. It is what it is. Welcome to Fable Hunters. I'm Yanji. I'm Saint. And today, uh, you moved some stuff out of your house. I I did. I didn't want to. Uh, but I, I did. I, I think uh, it was either you or the boxes. Uh, it was me or the boxes. Yes, yes. The wife said either I have to get the hell out of the house, or I have to get some boxes the hell out of the house, and that's kind of what happened. I, I prefer a roof over my head. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I accommodated because there's a. Uh, a certain big baby that doesn't like, you know, a few thousand roommates. So I think I think this is like a, a good time um, because you recently went on a search to find like a, a safe place to store all of your seal product. I'm sure uh, for the people who are watching that also want to get into collecting seal, maybe mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're first starting out. At first, like you just like put it all in your house somewhere, right? Initially. But, but yeah. then... Uh, like you're gonna find out pretty quickly like a couple sets in you're gonna run out of like a place to like stay in your hallways like yeah like all filled up so uh you got to put the boxes somewhere so uh, we have a case of everfest right yeah, now here's a case and so let's first talk about if you're if you're talking as a collector of sealed product five years ten years twenty years down the line uh what are some of the things that are important to you when you're looking to either like acquire or, or, or sell or like whatever, like a, a case of sealed product, what are the most important aspects? I would say the most important aspects are the outside box. I'd say the safety tape. My friend Rudy says that stop tape can be literally purchased and it absolutely can. I've, I've seen some of it on Amazon, but you still just want to do your best and check. Mm -hmm. Make sure the box is clean. Make sure that the tape was not taped over multiple times. Make sure that the label is authentic. It's the white label with the barcode. Yeah. Make sure that there's the printing date, there's the T9, the number, the batch, and the last couple digits are the time it was printed. Mm -hmm. Make sure this whole surface, you know, all six sides are clean. This says flesh and blood, that says flesh and blood, that says fabtcg.com. So it's labeled basically on four of the sides and the top, the bottom, I mean, this paper, if you've ripped open enough cases, this paper is very sensitive. If it's been taped over once with safety tape and you remove it, then it's going to leave a mark. So mm -hmm. I would say just always buyer beware. You want to ask the provenance of the box and you need to make sure you're doing business with somebody reliable. But just for your own sake, make sure that these, you know, every single surface of these cases are authentic. Again, make sure there's a sticker. Make sure that uh, all the little details check out, and um, that's that's how you protect yourself. The point on the provenance is pretty interesting because do you think it's worthwhile? Let's say if you're buying sealed product, mm -hmm. that you keep like a like the let's say you buy from like a store or whatever. Do you keep the receipts? I personally don't keep the receipts. I okay. mean, I'll, I'll hold on to invoices. Yeah. But if it comes from a known store and the store does business directly with LSS or does business directly with the distributor, okay. and you're getting it early on, you yeah. you pretty much know. Mm -hmm. Right. And not only that, as these items age, uh, I think condition is going to be more and more important. You know, I've, I've done business with um, vintage magic product by the case, but in vintage magic, cases are not as important because uh, the vintage products rarity went up to rare. It was just common, uncommon and rare. And you can almost get anything in any box. Whereas in flesh and blood, in this market, the case and the case premium are really important because it is assumed that within four boxes, you're going to get one legendary or fabled, most likely a legendary 90% of the time. So that way, you know that it's not, you know, the, the boxes aren't tampered with, they're not mapped. Your box or your four loose boxes, they might've been uh, coming from other cases that were opened where somebody plucked out the legendary mm -hmm. and they opened two of the boxes, the legendary was in the second box. Le they left the other two boxes. There's still probably a cold foil in there. There's still good cards in there. There still could be extended art cards in there. 
there still could be another legendary cold foil, but the chances definitely go down, okay. and some people play the numbers. That's why in Flesh and Blood, there's just such a, a premium. You know, it's, it's there's so much more value just keeping the case because you know that this was... You know, case number 481 minted at 11.46 a.m. a.m. of that day uh, at Cardamundi. And, um, you know, it's a real deal. And there's probably a 90, 95% chance that there's a legendary or fabled card in here. And that's really the only way to know. Oh, boy. Get more boxes, they said. Support your game, they said. Man, this is what we got left of... Tales of Aria first team, and that's just TOA. Still a space for Monarch. Wait till Holly sees the Evers Fest that I ordered. Oh man, this is not as easy as it looks. So you you picked like a, a storage, like a rental storage unit. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But also that's part partly because you live in New York City. Yeah, Manhattan's a little rough and real estate. Yeah, but like for the people out there who maybe don't necessarily have uh, either access or maybe they don't need to like yeah, rent, yeah. Out, rent out like a storage unit they have like a shed or, or something what what do you think are the most important like aspects of like a, a long-term storage uh, place i would say you got to look out for water uh make sure there's no water mm -hmm. anywhere in the vicinity like even at, at our home just for single cards uh we have a no water rule even our five-year-old and my wife and I, we don't allow liquids into this area, our, our, our office area. And within the storage unit, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, are there water sprinklers? No, they're not. But you're up to code, right? You have a certain reason for, you know, not having water sprinklers to not, like, flood everything. Mm -hmm. And we ourselves got, uh, got on a concrete facility with, like, key cards and locks and no little holes and whatnot, full concrete. But um, if you're not in a metropolitan city and don't have those safeguards, I would consider rats because I've heard that rats will chew through boxes. Oh, just yeah, definitely. Chew through boxes, insects, termites, etc. One thing that I didn't think to do initially that I'm personally working on is keep your boxes elevated. Like I'm thinking of purchasing those plastic platforms. Oh, just or, like a little like thing for them to sit yeah, on. Yeah, a plastic thing for it to sit on just in case. So it can be elevated so that the vermin, so that water won't get into it, okay. as well as just uh, wrapping. They've got, uh, what are they called, pallet wraps, right? The big plastic wraps oh, yeah, that yeah. Wrap, wrap a pallet. Um, that's really important. So just make sure nothing else other than the cards are flammable and the cards are not near water. There's no no sunlight coming in. Oh yeah, sunlight's yeah. a real killer because yeah. you can like fade out the labels. Or, it, or, it can, it can. Yeah. I think this is thermal. So if this sits in the sun too long, the whole thing goes black and then you lose a, you know, you lose identification and you lose the barcodes of the product. Yeah. So those are really, really important aspects of holding on to sealed. And the, the more you collect, the more you have, uh, the more of it you have. And <laughs> you just need to figure out how to keep it safe. This is my first foray. And... The reason why you guys will see in the videos, well, it was voluntary. I, I, I agreed to do it, but like... You made I, a choice. I made a choice. You had a yes, choice. I, I, I had it. I, yeah, I did have a choice. <laughs> and I think I made the less painful one. So I had to go get this unit like all of a sudden in a hurry. Yeah. But if anybody's uh, doing it for themselves, take the time to plan and uh, do research. Like it was like, it's Sunday. I can't deal with this anymore get this crap out of our house and like, I don't know, I, if it was a Tuesday or Wednesday, like I had to get everything out. I, I signed a lease really quick so that I could provide others with um, peace of mind and happiness. And, and, and the viewers get some knowledge. Yes, the viewers get some knowledge and people that are important to me are uh, not as butthurt, I guess, right? Uh, happy wife, happy life. Oh yes, that's, that's the saying, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm still a novice at protecting sealed product because it's, you know, for the most part, much of it has been uh, stored at home. And, uh, you know, sometimes I leave some stuff at uh, friends' houses just to split everything apart. But with all these sets coming out, like we're, we're now in the sixth set. Everfest is set number six, right? Everfest is three, four. Yeah, it is yeah, set it's number six. Number, wow, I can't it, believe it. Yeah, it's uh, time flies. We were starting with uh, WTR and 
Now we're on set number six. Yeah. So as the sets continue to uh, come along, mm -hmm. hopefully, knock on wood, only uh, three a year for now, unless yeah. we're doing some supplementary sets, that's still three more, I don't know, potential pallets that I have to, I have to worry about. Now, at home, I don't know how you guys will do it, but hopefully some of this was helpful. Any other takeaways, Yuenji? Even if I'm not like collecting like you, like pallets of, of product, mm -hmm. like it, it, it gets, even if I collect maybe like uh, like one or two cases every set, yeah. it, it still builds up. I find myself like in my personal uh, living space having like a hard time keeping like all either, it, it doesn't even have to be sealed cases, like bulk, or, like whatever, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. like cards. So it's good to have the information. Yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully uh, this provides some ideas with you guys or for you guys or at least a start for you guys maybe you guys have big basements or whatnot and uh, again the same thing applies water moisture elevated uh, areas mm -hmm. and make sure you keep this out of sunlight preferably keep it sealed hope you guys liked it uh, remember to like comment and subscribe and twiddle the notification bell everybody thanks for watching bye, bye. Got my boy Abu. He's here uh, getting the last batch of the day. Still got a lot left. Streets are rough trying to uh, avoid NYPD traffic. They're putting boots on every third car. So, yeah, just a couple bros and a dolly and a storage unit. Not very much fun. A lot of product though. No forklift, nothing crazy. Just me and a jacked up dolly. And six trips in an SUV. I think all of TOL, well, now most of TOA is done. I don't even think we hit half of Monarch, but uh, got some Monarch in here. At least uh, the big baby at home is gonna be a little happy. Word to the wise, everybody. If you have a wife, husband, significant other, loved one that you need to answer to at home, ask them first before you go ham and buy a bunch of sealed product. Support the game, obviously. Support the game. Support the game. There's there's going to be a spot here for Everfest. But consult your loved ones at home first. Do that in advance. It'll save you a lot of headache. And then it'll prevent you from needing to get one of these storage units. This thing's more expensive than my first bachelor pad. It's crazy. Anyways, later.